What's up, what's up? Welcome back to the show. For today's episode, I have for you the Fire Emblem Three Houses review. It is my first one ever, so just be a little kind when judging. However, it is going to be in five parts. It's going to be a quick introduction, overview, and the story. Three is going to be game mechanics. Four is going to be just tips, hints, and what my final team was. And lastly, a grade that will introduce the at some point rating system as well. So without doing much further, at people like games is the social handles, plg.gg for the shop. Now, let's get it. Part one, the introduction. So this is just more or less, if you're not aware, Fire Emblem Three Houses came out in about October, I believe. It was about seven, eight months at this point, maybe more. And I happened to be looking for a new game because I just had recently been sort of itching for a game to play. And more or less, uh, I did some research for games on Switch and Fire Emblem Three Houses was rated pretty highly. So I went to Target and I bought it. That is basically what it came down to. Have never played a Fire Emblem game before and didn't really know too much history about this one. And then I started. So now let me get over to part two. So part two, the overview and story. The game begins with your character whose name is Blythe. And hey, I learned he was actually part of the... Mm, three, two, one. So, as I was saying, part two, the overview and story. The game begins with your main character waking up, and then you have the option to choose the gender, male or female, and the storyline character's name is Blythe, who I learned as I was playing was that person who was added to Smash Brothers a couple of months ago in the first character pack, but that is irrelevant to what I'm talking about, so back to the topic. As the game begins, you're on some sort of like hunting thing with your dad and all of a sudden three students run up to you that they are being attacked by bandits and you go and help them which starts our game because you go back with them to Garag Mach Monastery which is the main place where the game takes place. Uh, you then have the option of choosing to lead one of three houses at the school which the house heads are the three people who actually you ran into the students there is the blue lions and dimitri the golden deer with their head clawed and the black eagles with edelgard i chose black eagles because it's team edelgard in this piece uh they each have different storylines that occur and black eagles apparently has two different storylines that occur so it's the longest one I was told to, based on the internet, that Black Eagles was a bit more difficult for your first time around, but I did it. I didn't have too much trouble, and they are probably the strongest team and the best storyline, so, you know, that's that. So, now you have a little heads up on what the story is, so then, now let's get into the game mechanics. So, part three game mechanics so i have six things that i wanted to mention that were worth uh talking about uh i know i've just gave you a quick overview of the story the game was awesome and that's because it was so in depth uh far so more so than i had expected because when i bought it i wasn't aware of all of the social simulator-esque elements that exist in it and so if i happen to miss anything during this review like i said my bad it's my first one so Bear with me. So I just happened to play a game I really like and I wanted to talk about it. Is more or less how this came about. So now, number one, battling. So the combat system in the game is an XCOM style grid combat. If that is not your thing, then I would suggest maybe not getting it because it does make up a main part of it. I love that going back to Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, which if you have played it, shout out, you're part of the squad. Um, and so that's just sort of a baseline thing. Now moving on to the social sim element. So once you become the professor of the Garrick Mock Monastery, you have the ability 
on certain days to be able to just hang out around the monastery and explore, which gives you the ability to speak with the students, etc., and to try to recruit, which is what now I'm going to get into because there is the ability to, when you're the head of one house, to go to the other houses and try to get some of their students to build out your team as well because the students actually end up making your units more or less in the game which how do you upgrade your units and how does the rpg elements come into it that takes me to the teaching portion so every week you are allowed to teach your students or your team and more or less that teaching and what you focus on because there's i mean like more than eight nine different options lance sword reason which is black magic faith which is white magic uh archery etc that your students can focus on and then those focuses build up to allow you to get classes now let's talk about the classes there's four classes there is the beginners intermediate advanced and the master classes more or less how you focus that time teaching to build up your students is what will allow you to then upgrade the, their classes and eventually get them stronger it is a little tricky if you're not really aware of what to do for the first time around i bounced around like reddit and youtube so shout out to everyone who's been super helpful and makes content like that um to learn how to sort of work it around i ended up with a couple of masters a couple of events a couple of people i couldn't get up but more or less i i like how that social aspect of a game where you're sort of just talking to these people and you're building up certain relationship levels because as i was going to say when you explore and you talk to these people around they have little relationship bars the higher that bar is the more lessons you can do on those teaching days so being sure to balance that out because on those days you can either explore about there's so much shit in this game that it'd be hard to explain everything without sounding like i'm being redundant or overlapping or missing something but it's worth it that's that that'd be a great way to put it so now I'm going to jump over to, to uh, your professor letter grade thing. I thought that was interesting. So more or less the amount of activities you can do is tied to basically how much you are doing. So you could go to like a greenhouse and plant stuff and that gives you points to be uh, for your professor points. When you uh, do uh, dine with students, it's like a whole interactive um data system i guess would be the best way to put it that's sort of put in all these individual components it doesn't really have like the open school feel like i know a lot of people keep comparing this to harry potter and it's a school with three houses i guess that's an argument for it i would love a harry potter game like this for goddamn sure but it's not harry potter for that and to that extent um but it, it it does i do like the student the school concept i feel like that's what people really love about Harry Potter as well and I feel like in a in a game where you have that sort of upgrade system it works and so uh now you know I, I mentioned a lot of things with relation to sort of quick mentions but then you could do other like now I'm going to talk about a little bit of miscellaneous stuff which connects to your professor score or your ability to recruit students you can go fishing which is the only thing that doesn't cost activity points because your professor grade, which starts at E, then can go up to A. The amount the amount that goes up is tied to the amount of activities you can do in a day or the amount of battles you can have because on every, I think it's Saturday, Sunday, because it's based on a calendar, you have the option to explore, battle, rest, and you have to just be strategic about it because by exploring, you are giving yourself the ability to increase your professor score and your relationships with people to potentially recruit them or you have the option to battle to make those you know units stronger so you don't get sort of rocked out late in the game so i like the the required balance of like how are you going to build yourself and your units uh strategically i mean again again i like the unit building concept i like the classes i just thought it was really fun like for someone who has never played a fire emblem game i'm not particularly married to the legacy of it all don't get me wrong like i respect it but like like on a scale of one to ten would i have seen myself playing this no but i found that i really enjoy XComs that i initially doubted so mario rabbits which was super fucking great game that people would just be like oh mario rabbits that's super super no it's awesome because it has the same element it's actually the best XCOM i've played in a long goddamn time 
Uh, I have not played the new. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off topic here. So now back to Fire Emblem. Uh, and so all of those elements combined, the battle, the monastery, social exploration, the students, the interactions, the ability to use the moods and how that ties into your units and your battling. I love that interactivity. I thought it was sort of ingenious. Definitely see why this game was arguably a game of the year. And I won't lie, it actually made me go and buy Persona 5, which I'm playing next because everyone's like, oh my God, all these social sim things are very similar to Persona 5. And I have no advanced knowledge of the game. So great. I'm playing another game where I can finally figure out why is this person in Smash? However, this game is not on the Switch, except for Fire Emblem, which was on Switch. Lady Saros, I know why you're in Smash as well now. Hey, um, now that's all I got for game mechanics. Let's move over to tips and hints. So tips and hints. I am going to give you these, but please take them with a grain of salt because this is coming from someone who did pretty well at the game. However, there are far better people who take it far more seriously, whose advice would probably be sharper, but hey, I beat the game and it wasn't bad and it might work. So let's start with strongest character. So personally, I ended up recruiting uh, Lysithia. You have to get her. She's the strongest black magic or reason character in the game. I then got Mercedes, who is the strongest healer in the game. Felix, who is a super strong sword master. I liked Ingrid, uh, who I picked up to be a Pegasus Knight. These are all part of the classes that I had mentioned uh, a little bit earlier in the review. And let's see who else. Um, uh, that 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 was the primary three that I ran after initially. Uh, you can also recruit other professors and then teach them oddly enough, but whatever. Two, quick recruiting. So the ability to recruit someone, when you talk to them or ask them to recruit, it'll be one of the options for the bubble when you're talking to the students. It'll say, hey, come back when you have like a stronger, like for Ingrid, it was a lance and flying, right? So... If you actually get their relationship level up you to like a C, I think, you can actually decrease the requirement for the skill. So don't waste too much training on trying to pick up other um, recruits and instead focus on building the relationship, doing something like T or gifts. So look up which gifts are best for what people and which flowers you can give people as well, which is through the plant, the, the greenhouse that I mentioned earlier as part of the activities and just load up people with gifts early on because you don't know what's going to happen in the story. So you don't know which characters you'll be able to bring over. So whoever you want, grab them as quick as possible. Um, if you are playing as the Black Eagles, talk to Ingrid during the month two. That's all I'm going to say. Now, lost items uh, that you find around, you can give them to characters to increase their moods or to increase your relationship level. The relationship levels go from, I think, D to S. Um, and then you have the option of actually marrying one of the characters at the end, depending on how high the relationship levels are. Books, there's a bunch, whenever you explore around the monastery at the beginning of a month, there's a bunch of books around the monastery that you can find that automatically give you a really big ch chunk of experience for your professor uh, score and letter. So I suggest always getting those um, because it really simplifies. I ended up as an A plus professor. I don't know if S existed. I was trying to get that, but I started getting the hang of it like maybe a quarter into the game. Whereas if I started from the beginning, probably would have gotten to everywhere I needed. Events like when you explore and fish you get experience for each fish caught However, there are certain days that you're exploring where they have fish events That means that it will either be bigger fish that can give you money when you sell them to shop or it allows you to get multiple fish Per catch which that just triples or quadruples the experience that you're getting even though it's low If you grind out the fishing early enough and get the early experience It's not as useful later on you'll be able to sort of shortcut the leveling again um so another hint there and yeah that that'll be about it you can train yourself by talking to professors around the campus uh focus on some skill sets like i said don't waste your time trying to get 
uh, other other things, other skills, uh, or skills to recruit people. Now, my final team, I had uh, just, you know, just to give you guys a heads up, maybe you'll know what this means, maybe you won't, maybe you'll be playing, maybe you just finished the game and like me, just like to go back and watch some content like this. Uh, I ended up with Blythe, Edelgard, Hubert, Lysithia, Mercedes, Ingrid, like I said, Felix, like I said, uh, I'm gonna not mention one character. I ended up with Dorothea, who is actually part of the house as well, Linhart. So I had a really good balance of, of, of um, magic and skill with a couple of horseback guys at Ferdinand as well, and Bernadetta, which shout out if you get Bernadetta, put that archer down, killer, super killer. But that's beyond the point. That is tips and hints, and more or less the entirety of the review. So now, Let's get into the review grade. So this is something actually my sister recommended I not do because she said, quote, that is very confusing. I think a numbers or letter system might work better, but I'm not going to listen to it. So I introduce to you the solo at some point in the day slash people like games review score system. Yeah, I'm going to call it that. So beginning with one, we have why though? Two, eh, three, I mean, four, that's dope, and five, A. There are points, so if I say, mm, I mean, eh, that is a 2.5, or if I say, I mean, that's, eh, that's dope, I mean, that's up to you, you see how this works. So. Uh, on a scale of five to one, more or less, five being the best, one being the worst, that is what it's going to be. Might end up changing it if I feel like it's corny. I don't know how I feel. I feel like it's funny today, but that might change. We'll find out. I am going to give this round of applause. I gotta really start getting these sound effects down. And just so I'm putting in a sound effect of a drum roll. The official solo, first ever inaugural game review, which I hope this wasn't terrible. Score for Fire Emblem Three Houses on the Nintendo Switch is a. Hey, I fucking loved it. I thought it was a really, really, really great playthrough. Put like 40, 50 plus hours into it over two weeks, if not a little, maybe 10 days, uh, just to sort of cram through it. I enjoyed it so much that it made me sort of look at a lot of the reviews, which I'd mentioned Persona 5. And it made me go and buy Persona 5, so I will be playing that. I'm going to be giving you guys a review for that in the future as well. Um, and that's it. And that's the review. I, like I said, hope this wasn't terrible. I hope you enjoyed it. It was sort of fun to put together. I had a lot of time, fun time playing the game. So this just sort of came out as a means to want to talk about it and sort of find the fellow Fire Emblem community to be like, oh shit, this is great. Um, and shout out to the Reddit Fire Emblem for helping guide me early on. Um, that's about all I got. Um, as usual, at People Like Games is the handles. Be sure to subscribe uh, on socials, plg.gg for the shop. Subscribe this to this channel or whatever, like this video. Uh, I got the week cap coming up for you tomorrow. And a little surprise on Friday, Saturday, so I'm not going to spoil that. Anyway, as always, thank you for listening. And you know how I get out of here. Fiend. Peace.